Hi, it's Sachi. I try to make the pattern making as simple as possible for this wizard hat. This method is super easy and you can adjust it for any size. I used glow in the dark fabric, but this is not necessary. Medium to heavyweight wool and regular craft felt would be good for this hat. I taped up some packing paper to get this square piece of paper. Measure your head circumference and add about half an inch. And then multiply that number by 0.18. This should work for both metric and imperial systems. Measure that amount from the tip of your folded piece. Then add half inch seam allowance. From the first curved line, measure 6 inches for the brim. This can be any number you like. Then add half inch seam allowance to the outer edge. You're going to remove this section, and these lines are going to be the center back seam. I added half inch seam allowances for the center back seam before I cut out the excess paper. From the straight edge of the paper, I measured half inch for the seam allowance and drew the straight line. Measure 16 inches for the height of the hat. You can make this shorter or longer, depending on the look you want. On the line you just drew, place the measuring tape at the number for the hat circumference. Then measure the curved line and mark at zero point. I added half inch seam allowance all around this pie shape. I bought this glow in the dark fabric online. I'll leave the link in the description box. But this was my first time using this fabric. Its backside is smooth and has a vinyl-like feel to it. And the other side is soft and fuzzy. I cut out one piece for the cone top and two pieces for the brim. For the hard structure of the brim, I used thick sew-in interfacing. I removed all the seam allowance except for the one side of the center back. I cut it like this so I could overlap the ends like this to reduce bulk. I wanted to iron out all the wrinkles from the fabric, but the fabric didn't respond to low heat ironing at all, and when I turned up the heat, it started glowing under the iron. Afraid for losing the integrity of the fabric, I decided not to use my iron on this project. Sew the center back seams of the brim pieces, then sew both pieces together with right sides facing each other. When you're sewing a long seam like this, two layers tend to shift. To prevent shifting, I clip or pin in couple places, and most importantly, grab the fabric firmly with both hands in front and behind the needle and stretch it slightly. 
very slightly under the needle to keep the fabric taut. Cut out small V shapes from the seam allowance to reduce bulk. Overwrap and sew the center back of the interfacing. Slide the interfacing into the brim. My interfacing piece didn't sit right inside the brim at first, so I took it out and cut off about 1 8 of an inch all around from the outer edge to make it a little smaller. I put all the seam allowances to the bottom side of the interfacing inside, adjusted the whole thing so the outer edge seam is sitting slightly on the bottom side of the brim, Pull the brim fabric to the inner corner to smooth out any wrinkles and baste the inner seam allowance to encase the interfacing in place. I backstitched only in the beginning of the basting stitch. Then I clipped into the seam allowance close to but not through the basting stitch. Align the center back seams of the cone top and the brim. And sew with half inch seam allowance. I stole some batting from my body pillow that was too fluffy anyways and stuffed it inside the comb. I used a leftover circle to hide the batting inside. Here, you could just tack this circle inside in a few places and call it a day, but when I tried the hat on, my dark hair was showing through the white fabric too much, so I decided to add some lining to the area. I cut out a 3 inch wide strip of white fleece fabric and attached it to the circle to make the lining. I hand stitched the lining to the base of the hat. I didn't fold over the raw edge because I was using thick fleece fabric, but if you use thinner material, you could turn about half inch toward inside the hat to make a neat lining edge.
For the finishing touch, I sewed some tucks at the center back to give some shaping to the hat. One trick to hide the ends of these stitches is to start sewing with a single thread in the needle without a knot, pull the thread off the needle, and then put both ends through the needle and sew with double thread. At the end, sew through one of the previous stitch and tie the thread on the previous stitch. Hide the thread inside by taking a big stitch and cutting as close to the fabric as possible. I am very happy with how this hat came out. I used 6 inches for the brim width but if you think this is too wide, I would use 4 or 5 inches. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. Please leave a comment or two. Happy sewing!